she had talked about being a dancer, had done something else in nightclubs, but she's not quite sure what. And she mentioned Frank Sinatra a lot. She said that Frank came up very often in conversations that, that Anita had said that she got him his start. She said that repeatedly. I'm in my grandmother's old neighborhood. This is the house where she lived. No one in. I'm gonna canvas the neighborhood and see if there's a neighbor who might remember Anita. This neighbor wasn't comfortable talking on camera, but she did know Anita very well and shared lots of information. She said that they were very shocked when she passed away because they didn't think she was sick at all, so she must have been pretty spry. She had a garden out the back. She had a dog named Spunky. She had talked about being a dancer, had done something else in nightclubs, but she's not quite sure what. And she mentioned Frank Sinatra a lot. She said that Frank came up very often in conversations that, that Anita had said that she got him his start. She said that repeatedly. I love that it was Frank Sinatra because my mom was obsessed with Frank Sinatra and I met Frank Sinatra when I was doing Atlantic City. Burt Lancaster introduced him to me and he was a little flirtatious. So maybe I had some Anita vibe that he responded to, I don't know. Thanks for that information. I'm really excited because Anita's husband, Dom, has some nieces that live somewhere in the neighborhood, and I think they know quite a bit. We still have nothing except that distorted, freaky picture at the World's Fair. We don't really know what she looked like. One distorted photo and one laminated, wrinkled photo, and that's it. So I'm really hoping that they have some photos for us. Anita's been such a mystery. If anyone can shed some light as to who she was, I'm hoping it's her nieces. We're about to meet for the first time. This should be surprising for all of us. Hi. Hi. Hi, I understand. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so kind of. Hi, thanks for talking to me. Oh, so it's our friend. pleasure. You can tell me anything. We can. Oh, yes. <laughs> you had no idea that she had had any children. None. But okay. she, they had no kids together, They had right? no kids together, no. My grandfather moved in next door, and he was 19, and she got pregnant at 12. Oh, oh my god. And then the second time, like a year later, and she got married at, you know, six months pregnant. Oh. And then we lost track of her. We don't even know what happened to her. Our That's Uncle Don, we had heard, met her in the city. He was in the Coast Guard, and I mm -hmm. guess off on leave, and met her probably, at, we heard, at one of the clubs in the city. But, um, so they stayed together for a long time, so oh, it must have yeah. been pretty happy. They, yeah. that was a good marriage. Happy. Was it? She loved that modest little home that you saw already. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she loved her little home and her yard, and was happy there. She was the bigger personality out of the two. Do you have pictures? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We've been so hoping we would see pictures. Well, here you go. This is me. Oh, Actually, she's holding wow. me in that picture. Oh, Anita. This is um, Uncle Donnie. Oh, um, whoa, he handsome. He was very, very, very handsome. Very handsome. Um, he looked a lot like Tony Curtis, really. Uh, oh, wow. And this is a sketch of her. <gasps> now, see, that looks like my family. Oh, my God, it's totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it weird. Could. That's what I mean. I think <gasps> Oh Pretty my scary. God. <laughs> I think I played that part in White in the <laughs> what movie is it? Front page, I think. So freaky, because I wonder what Anita would have thought if she knew that she had a granddaughter that was on TV or in films, you know, I wonder if she would have thought that was cool. But I'm grateful to to have solved the mystery of Anita and the fact that she was so close that Anita was living, you know, within an hour of New York was just crazy. She was like yeah. a spy, you know, she had this whole yeah. other persona and life and history that nobody knew about. It makes you wonder. Yeah. Well, I think she obviously went through a lot of stuff when she was younger and, you know, sometimes she'd just kind of stare at you and probably was a lot, she was a lot of stuff going on in that yeah. head, you know, when she would look at other children. It's nice to know that, you know, she was, 
Uh, your experience of her was such a, a positive one and that she made your uncle so happy. Yep, yes, they, was. they had a nice life together. I think the biggest change in terms of the way I, I, I saw my grandmother was just that I, as the journey unfolded, I became more and more compassionate towards her and more forgiving and my heart just went out to her. On one hand, I wish that I had been able to tell Anita that, you know, my mom's okay and that she has, you know, a million grandchildren. But on the other hand, I think, well, you know, maybe that would have been just too much for her that late in life. Seriously, you know, her life is what great tragic novels are made out of, and she ended up living happily ever after. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. Somehow, it humbles you to to hear about your relatives' journeys and what they did. I love that she was independent and found her way, and I hope that I inherited some of that. I feel close to her and her temperament and her, her ability to survive. <laughs>